Did you get the CAS Plus or the CISP cybersecurity certification? What's the difference between the two? In this video, we're gonna compare the CISP and the CAS Plus cybersecurity certifications to help you choose the right one for your career. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without advertisements, resume reviews, career advice, and consulting services. Also, if you're trying to get into cybersecurity, check out my Getting Started page on my website for free resources and a free copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. All right, let's get into the video. As people progress in their IT or cybersecurity careers, they eventually reach a point where they're ready for advanced level certifications. When it comes to cybersecurity, two of the certifications that always come up are the CISP from ISC Squared and the CAS Plus from CompTIA. But why would you choose one over the other? First, let's break down each certification, including the requirements, domain objectives, and the cost. And after we do that, we'll go ahead and compare the two and you'll get my thoughts on each one of them. Let's first look at the CAS Plus, which is the CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner. Now on the screen, we have the website for the CAS Plus, again, from CompTIA. And if we take a little bit closer look here, now the first thing that you're gonna see is there is a new exam coming out as of the recording of this video. So right now we're recording this in the summer of 2021, and October 2021 is a new version of the exam. As far as this conversation, it's not really that relevant, but typically with new exams when they first come out, there aren't a lot of study materials for that new version. So that's just something to keep in mind if you wanna go for the CAS Plus. Now, if we scroll down here, we can see a little bit more about the actual certification. So what skills are you gonna learn? Risk management, enterprise security architecture, enterprise security operations, technical integration of enterprise security, research development, and collaboration. And then if we keep scrolling down here, we can see some different job roles. So security architect, and we also see some companies that actually employ people with the CAS Plus certification. If we keep scrolling down, we can see actual details as far as the exam. So the current version, again, as of the recording of this video, is the CAS 003. And that launched in 2018. And then the new version, the CAS 004, again, that's October 2021, when that's gonna release. A maximum of 90 questions on the exam. There's multiple choice and there's performance-based questions. So performance-based are gonna be things like drag and drop or fill in the blank, select multiple choices, things like that. You get up to 165 minutes on the exam. So you get a little bit more than two hours on the exam. And then we can see here that you don't actually get a score. It's a pass fail exam. Now with CompTIA exams, there's never a requirement of certain work experience, but they do always provide a recommendation based on how they feel the exam is and how difficult it's going to be. So they do recommend 10 years of experience. There's people that are gonna pass with less. So I wouldn't use that as a hard and fast rule, but it is a recommendation. You can see here that this current version, this CAS 003, retires in February of 2022. So if you do go for the CAS Plus, keep that in mind that at that point, you'll have to go for the new version. Typically versions run about three years and then they get retired. And you can even see that here for the new version that after three years, they're gonna retire it. And the cost, 466 US dollars. So it's not an inexpensive exam, especially compared to other ones like the Security Plus or some of the entry level ones for Cisco and other vendors. So keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna talk about the CISP, which stands for the Certified Information Systems Security Professional. Now on the screen here, we have the CISP website. And again, that's from ISC Squared. And if we scroll down here, we can look a little bit more about the certification. Now, one of the things that should really stand out to you is the actual job roles that they list. Some of these are gonna be higher level job roles than we saw on the CAS Plus website. So CISO, Certified Information Security Officer, which would be the top person for security in the organization. Chief Information Officer, Director, IT Director. So there's definitely some high level jobs in here. Now, if we look at registering for the exam, we can see the different domains that exist. So domain one, security and risk management, asset security, security architecture and engineering, communication and network security, identity and access management, security assessment and testing, security operations, software development security. 
One of the things with the CISSP or the CISP, it's called both, is that it covers a lot of different information from security. So you have to know a little bit about everything. It's a little bit different than on the CAS Plus. If we go to get certified here, we can see something that is very different than the CAS Plus. Now with the CISP or the CISSP, they have a mandatory experience requirement in order to get certified. So if you see right here, you have to have at least five years of experience in at least two domains. So again, the domains are right here on this step two, but you have to have experience in at least two of those and at least five years total. Now there are ways that you can get a waiver. So you can get a one year waiver and only need four years of experience. And there's also something called the associate of ISC squared. And if you haven't seen my video on that, I would go ahead and check out that on the YouTube channel. But that is an option if you don't have the experience. Maybe you're very close, you're right there almost, and you wanna take it, that is an option. Now, as far as that process too, you actually have to have somebody attest or confirm your experience. You can use ISC Square to do that as well, and they'll take a look at your resume and see how many years of experience you have and things like that. But again, it's a hard and fast requirement. It is not like CompTIA where it's a recommendation. And then if we scroll down here, the cost to maintain the certification is gonna be more expensive. So right here we have $125 for the CISP. If we flip back to the CompTIA website, we can actually see what they require for the CAS Plus to maintain it. So if we go down here, $150, okay? So $150 for the three year period. With the CISSP, it's $125 per year. So keep that in mind, there is a difference for sure. And then if you're an associate of ISC squared, so you don't have the required experience yet, you have a $50 fee. So that's gonna be $50 a year, so 150, so that would be equal. But keep that in mind, these certification fees can add up. And if you're not prepared for that, it can be a unpleasant surprise. I hope that you're enjoying the content in this video so far. If you are, make sure to hit the thumbs up to like this video. If you think of any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Also remember that this training and courses can be found on my website without distracting interruptions or advertisements. All right, let's get back to the content. Now that we've looked at each certification in isolation, let's compare the two. One of the most common certification requirement charts in the United States is the DOD 8140, which is also formally called the DOD 8570 mandate. Essentially what this mandate does is it categorizes different job roles based on the responsibility and then it assigns certifications to that job role. So if you're overseeing an enterprise network, you're gonna have a very high level certification requirement, something like the CISP. Now, why is that important? Well, typically in job postings that have contractual requirements, you might actually have to satisfy these and have certain certifications. If we go to the SANS website, they do a nice job of laying it out for the DOD 8140. So you can see it here on the screen. And if we scroll down here, we'll go to the chart that has all the certifications. So, and you can compare where the CASP plus shows up. It was formerly called the CASP and then CompTIA added the plus, but you have a CASP here. So I am level two, and then you have the CISP at level three. So again, keep that in mind. That's where that can come into play for sure. So what about job postings? Well, if we go to nd.com, which is a popular job searching site here in the United States, we can search for both of the certifications. So let's start by searching for CISP. So we can see that there's 13,000, almost 14,000 jobs that are returned for that certification. If we go ahead and we search for CAS Plus, we get 2,095 jobs. That is a significant difference. And if we eliminate the plus just to make sure here, it still comes back with the same amount. So 2,095, there's no difference between the plus or no plus. But keep that in mind, there's a whole bunch more jobs that are requesting the CISP and that can open you up for more job opportunities. If you do this search and you look at the actual job titles and job descriptions, typically the differences that you're gonna find, are the CAS plus are more of the senior staff level, or maybe a lead job, like an entry level lead. And then for the SIS, you're gonna have those manager level jobs, those director level jobs, those chief information security officer jobs. Again, also, if we think back to the experience requirements, remember the CAS Plus is a recommendation of 10 years of experience. For the SIS, 
you actually have to have at least four years of experience if you have a one-year waiver or five years of experience. And that's actually going to be validated and you won't get your certification if you can't prove your experience. As far as the cost, remember with the CAS Plus, it's the 466 US dollars. If we go ahead and look at the CISP cost, if you're in the United States, it's gonna run you $749. That's a pretty big price difference. That's almost double. As far as the amount of questions on the CAS Plus, you get a maximum of 90 questions. And on the CISP, you get a range between 100 and 150 questions based on how well you do. If you remember back to the domains that the CISP covers, it covers a whole bunch of information. So you actually have to know a lot about different subjects and that's going to come through on the questions. They have to test you on a whole bunch of different stuff. And honestly, on the CISP, they're gonna give you a lot of ambiguous questions. So it's gonna be very gray. And you're gonna to have to answer with incomplete information. That's gonna require some of that experience. As far as this comparison, I'm not really gonna talk about salary because there's so many different figures and you know, scenarios that can cause that to skew. But just remember, with those jobs for the CISP that tend to be management level jobs, director level jobs, it's obviously gonna run a higher salary. If you're interested in some of the salaries though, feel free to check out some of the surveys that are done online or even check out sites like Glassdoor and they'll tell you what the salaries are. So what's the final verdict? Well, if you've seen any of my other videos about the CISP, then you know that it is definitely something that you have to have on your radar in your career. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the CAS Plus is worthless. It really kind of comes down to where you are in your career and what you're looking to do, what kind of jobs you're looking to go after. Do you have the experience? Remember, the CISP is actually gonna require a certain level of experience just to get that certification. The CAS Plus, you can learn a lot of that information earlier and not have to have the experience to validate and get your certification. Additionally, the CAS Plus is meant for somebody in a more technical position. So maybe a technical lead where the CISP is really meant for that manager that's dealing with putting the pieces in place and not necessarily dealing with a lot of the technology or being hands-on with it. Question of the day, which certification are you gonna pursue? The CISP or the CAS Plus? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we compared the CISP and the CAS Plus to help you choose the right cybersecurity certification for your career. Remember, everybody's situation is different and you have to make the choice that's best for your career and where you're at and looking to go. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without advertisements, resume reviews, career advice, and consulting services. And I'll see you next time.